Uh, item number eight, public hearings. Adopt a resolution approving the 2012-2017 five-year capital improvement program and appropriating funding for the 2012-13 capital improvement project budget. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, we're uh, asking your consideration tonight to uh, first hold a public hearing to allow members of the community, if there are any, to comment on the proposed capital improvement <coughs> program and budget, as well as uh, your consideration to approve that document uh, and the plan that it sets forth. The City Council conducted a study session meeting uh, last week during which we reviewed with you in uh, substantially more detail some of the critical aspects of that plan and budget. Uh, it's not our intent to repeat that presentation tonight, but simply to summarize some of the high points, both uh, from a program, uh, from a programmatic perspective, though, from the work plan perspective, as well as from a financial perspective. Uh, the budget itself and the capital improvement program are available to any interested resident uh, through the city clerk's office in the San Bruno Library and uh, on the city's website. The program itself, uh, uh, at, we every year uh, take a five-year planning horizon into consideration in developing the work program for necessary improvements, repairs, rehabilitation, replacement to the city's critical infrastructure. Uh, the city, as you know, has a broad and diverse array of capital assets that are critical to the city's ability to support delivery of the wide range of services that our residents respect, uh, expect and that they rely on. When we think of infrastructure, uh, we're, we're often conditioned to think of streets and possibly those utility uh, uh, facilities or infrastructure both above ground and below ground, our water and sewer main lines, our pump stations, our wells, etc. But we may on occasion forget that our infrastructure, if you will, consists also of our public buildings, such as the one that we're in tonight or the one that uh, we work out of on El Camino Real. It also includes our parks, our ball fields, our sports facilities, our cable television infrastructure, as well as the street lights and other necessary facilities that, as I indicated, support the services that the city provides. This capital improvement program takes a long-term five-year planning horizon into consideration and evaluating as I indicated, the necessary uh, investment in maintaining that infrastructure. And it takes a one-year uh, look at what will be the specific work program and the costs of delivering that work program. The purpose of the five-year capital improvement program are, as I indicated, to maintain and to optimize the useful life of that infrastructure to protect the city's investment in its capital assets, to prioritize the necessary investments or, or projects that need to be delivered, and importantly, to identify both the funding requirements as well as the funding sources that are available to support the projects that need to be done. And um, as Kim will discuss with you in a moment, there is uh, also a variety of resources that are used to fund the capital improvement program. Um, however, as we indicated to the City Council at the study session last week, uh, those revenue sources are far from uh, unlimited and they are even far from sufficient to actually deliver the work program in the necessary time frame. So it, it, is, it is a continual uh, juggling act, if you will, of prioritizing those projects that are most critical to the delivery of, of city services. Overall, the city, in evaluating the program that we're bringing for you tonight, bringing forward to you tonight, 
um, looks at the city's overall capacity, bo both operational as well as uh, delivery, as well as financial, to deliver the projects that are necessary. The program looks at uh, optimizing the schedule and the timing for the uh, necessary improvements, looking at when do we need them and, and how do we deliver them within the time frame that they're needed. And it takes into consideration long-term planning. Um, again, we look at the five-year planning horizon because it's a practical, realistic uh, glimpse at the, uh, at the necessary projects and the, and the available funding sources. But in reality, it is both prudent and necessary to take an even longer-term view of, of of infrastructure in order to develop that five-year plan. Um, in our rate study uh, that the City Council considered a number of months ago related to our water and wastewater utilities, uh, we took a 10-year planning horizon into consideration. And in the master plan documents that we've been preparing and, and uh, will be presenting for the City Council's individual consideration in the next several months, uh, in for our water system, our wastewater system, and for our stormwater system, we're looking at as long as a 20-year planning horizon for uh, maintenance and rehabilitation of the necessary infrastructure. Um, in this five-year capital improvement program and in the one-year budget that is in front of you tonight, one of the key issues I mentioned funding as as a critical component of the city's ability to deliver the program that is necessary to support it and uh, protect its capital assets is the loss of redevelopment. Now, while we may and the, and the public may uh, understand redevelopment and its util utility to be primarily about uh, new capital investment in the community and economic development, and that is, in fact, exactly what redevelopment set out to provide when it was first initiated in our state a number of years ago. In fact, this city and many cities have relied on redevelopment agency tax increment <coughs> funding to be able to further necessary rehabilitation and capacity enhancing infrastructure projects, which are the fundamental basis for any development and economic development in particular within a community. So uh, as you heard from us last week at the study session, one of our key considerations this year and going forward is the loss of redevelopment and not only how does that affect our ability to deliver our, our vision that's been articulated through the the transit corridors planning process that has recently concluded and which has produced a, an exciting vision and plan that the City Council will be considering uh, very shortly. It, the loss of redevelopment funding has also created a, a, a bit more urgency and concern about uh, how to maintain and, and uh, plan for necessary infrastructure capacity now and into the future. We have used a variety of planning documents, as I indicated, with a variety of planning horizons, but particularly taking the long-term view to assure that the program that is articulated in our capital and to improvements program and, and the work program is actually consistent with the variety of other plans, policies, studies, and so forth that the city has undertaken uh, related to uh, its priorities having to do with both our utility as well as our other infrastructure. The slide in front of you has a sampling of those documents and the policies that are articulated in each of those documents have have been consulted in the development of the five-year and the one-year program. I'm going to ask our finance director, Kim Duran, to give you a, a little bit of uh, just a taste of some of the uh, information that is detailed more specifically in the capital improvement program and then walk you through some of the financial considerations that, or, or for the, the actual financial information that frames the big picture of this budget. 
Thank you, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The 2012 to 17 CIP program includes a total of 41 projects across the seven categories as shown in the slide behind me. Projects appearing in the five-year program encompass the repair and rehabilitation of the city's water and sewer mains, rehabilitation of pump stations, tanks, and wells, purchase of cable television equipment, repairs and improvements to city facilities, street and sidewalk rehabilitation, and continuing investment in technology. Of the 41 projects in the five-year program, only five projects appear in the program for the first time. The rest of the projects either are carry forward from previous CIP budgets or have been presented to council separately um, prior to this budget. The five projects that are appearing for the first time include the disaster recovery project, which will ensure that the city's network and business operations continue in the event of a catastrophic event, a fire suppression project, to install a clean agent fire suppression system at the City Hall Data Center as well as at the Cable Head End and Data Center. The Madison Slope Stabilization, which will fund the design and construction of the stabilization of the hillside of Madison Slope. Microsoft Office Upgrade, which will replace the city's existing outdated Microsoft Office 2000 with the most current Microsoft Office suite available. And finally, the Skyline Boulevard widening, which is a project pending the approval of San Mateo County Transportation Authority uh, to fund staff oversight for the widening of Skyline Boulevard between Sneath Lane and Interstate 280. Since the adoption of the last CIP budget, a total of 25 projects have been completed and four have been defunded, uh, allowing for higher priority projects to uh, move forward. Also, as discussed at the CIP study session, the CIP, the proposed CIP budget includes a recommendation to move a total of 14 projects from the, from the previously uh, approved CIP budgets to the operating budget. These projects include various studies, master plan updates, grant programs, and maintenance items that are more appropriately defined as operating costs. If approved, the 2012-13 operating budget will be amended at a future date to include the incorporation of these projects. The five-year capital program uh, includes a total cost, uh, pr projected cost of $111 million of which $20 million is for the Crestmore Recovery Project. Of the remaining $91 million, nearly three quarters of that amount, or just over $70 million, is for water and wastewater projects. Uh, you might recall this is uh, the 10-year program uh, that was discussed during the water and wastewater rate study. The 10-year program for water was 84 million and wastewater was 75 million so these numbers are consistent with what was discussed previously water and wastewater projects in the current year work program include the reconstruction of pump station 4 replacement of the water mains at spyglass and marion drives and the replacement of commodore park well the construction of a replacement sewer main on san mateo avenue and canes avenue and continuing investments in the south jointly owned treatment wastewater treatment plant with south san francisco as the city manager previously uh, indicated, the city's utilities have master plans that provide a foundation for the five-year work program. However, no similar document exists for the city's facilities, park, and technology improvements. In both the parks and facilities section and technology sections of the budget, no projects outside of the current year work program are included. Staff will continue to focus efforts on improving the manner in which the city plans for future projects in these areas. The CIP budget is a five-year planning document that includes a budget appropriation for the current year only. The resolution that is before you this evening uh, requests total budget appropriations of just over $33 million, $11.4 million of that being carryover appropriations from either pre previously approved CIP budgets or prior city council actions. The remaining $22.3 million uh, it, well, it's across seven categories, actually comes from a total of 31 different funding sources, if you look at the uh, summary that's included in the budget. Uh, so it, it really what that demonstrates is staff's continuing effort to pursue grant opportunities to uh, help fund city projects that are a priority and also identify other special revenue uh, funding sources so that we're not utilizing uh, general fund funding sources when we don't have to. 
so that concludes my portion of the presentation. Uh, staff is here tonight and can answer any specific questions about projects that you might have. Any questions of staff at this time? All right, this is a public hearing. Uh, go, go to the public hearing. This is a public hearing and I'd like to open the public hearing now. Anyone in the public like to address the council on this <laughs> item? Right, if I close the public hearing, uh, you'll be precluded from talking to us about this item again. Move to close public hearing. Second. Motion is second to close the public hearing on the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Discussion or action? Uh, to the chair, there are three items that are within the CIP budget that uh, were brought up at the study session. One that I'm going to add that I hadn't brought up at that time. And these were, uh, and they are, the uh, Vactor truck, the video inspection truck, and the Olympic pump station. Uh, those three items I would like to see, um, as I indicated before, but on all three of those items, more of a cost analysis, whether they're really the best avenue that, in which to go with the uh, pump project, as well as the two vehicles that I just mentioned. So just for the record, I want to see those come back. It would be my expectation that those, uh, for me personally, I'm speaking for myself, that I, I need to be uh, have more detail and more uh, understanding and appreciation for the need for those three items. You just want further uh, detail and explanation? Or do you want to handle them separately and remove them? Uh, I guess we could handle them separately and remove them, or um, I guess the city manager, we could either separately re re remove them or approve it with the understanding that when those come back forward that they are uh, brought up and, and given more time and deliberation. Uh, yes, I think staff, uh, first of all, these three items were identified in the discussion at the study session and staff <clears throat> is committed to uh, understanding uh, both what the council's direction on this is, as well as in the near term, bringing back the Olympic pump station analysis and consideration for the type of project that the staff will be recommending move forward uh, prior to taking any um, uh, uh, action to solicit uh, design or construction contracts. So uh, we're I don't think, unless it's the council's interest to change the budget as it's presented, um, I don't, uh, we, I, I would commit that staff has heard and understood the council's interest to bring that, that back uh, in the near term. The other two items, if I remember correctly, are proposed for consideration of funding in future years, not in the current fiscal year 12-13. And so once again, uh, we understand the council's direction and uh, we'll be bringing those back for further analysis and consideration by the city council prior to any action to solicit actual purchase of those vehicles. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Uh, action? Uh, Irene? I, we also discussed at the study session, is that too loud? No, it's fine. Okay. We also discussed um, looking into the Bay, Bay Shore Circle um, BART spur and, see, and working with them to see if we can do something with it. And I, I realize we can't just uh, throw that in there, but I'd like, to, I'd like staff to come back at some point in the near future discussing what we can do with that. Uh, th thank you, uh, Councilmember O'Connell. Yes, um, similarly, staff uh, is preparing to bring back a report on our research and analysis on that uh, piece of property and the relationship, the ownership, and uh, uh, alternative suggestions about uh, uh, future use of that parcel that uh, we believe will uh, be responsive to the City Council's interest. I know that the discussion at the study session considered whether a project uh, be developed now and entered into the capital budget. You could certainly direct us to do that tonight, or uh, my recommendation would be that uh, we bring, we'd be tasked with bringing back uh, an, an, a complete report and analysis uh, time frame at the beginning of the calendar year in the January, February time frame. Um, and then at that time, you could consider 
one, whether you're interested in, in our analysis and recommendations, and then secondly, whether you would like to amend the capital and budget to include something specific. If, if I, well, I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm, I mean, we're, it, it says here that uh, staff is going to develop a plan and present it in, in January. What is the plan based on? Uh, is I mean I think it's, it was correct me if I'm wrong Irene but you question what the availability of the property is what is our you know what are our limitations and what what possibly could the city do uh, if it were uh, given that property by BART correct it, however yeah. it works out yeah. either BART gives it to us we do a cooperative thing I have no idea, and that, I'm assuming that's what staff's going to find out. Yeah, and so that, I mean, that's, that's all that was given direction. I don't know what possibly a project would be other than a cleanup, you know, but uh, I, I mean, I'm just not really clear as to what staff is going to be providing us in January. Yes. Yeah, Chair. <laughs> this is something that, and I appreciate Council Member O'Connell bringing it up again. I brought it up at the study session. I brought it up last November, I brought it up before, um, and other people from the community brought it up. And it was a matter of, we understand that the area that BART owns deteriorated. So city staff has maintained that. BART was paying for our time. My understanding is unless that's changed, BART does not. Unless it, I'm incorrect. That is correct, we are not so receiving reimbursement. Now, we're doing it because if we don't do it, no one's gonna do it. So we're, we're footing the bill taxpayers are for something that's not ours so then the question was we need to those those streets are so darn narrow for emergency vehicles for people who park their cars who are three-fourths the car on the sidewalk because they're so afraid of it getting sideswiped this was my intention as bringing it forward way back when was for us to try to move on that and see if we can't acquire it even to improve the parking and 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 the neighborhood in that at least so that's kind of where my direction, just to give you some thought. So to, to answer uh, Vice Mayor Ibero's question, uh, I think the use of the word plan or project might be a little bit ambitious. It was our intent to return to the city council with uh, detailed information about uh, the ownership, the configuration, the maintenance, the operation of, of that property and um, hearing the council members' interests in parking, I believe uh, Councilmember O'Connell had I expressed some interest in the potential of um, improvement of the property. We would be also prepared to give you some ideas. This is, this is uh, as uh, Councilmember uh, Medina has indicated, is not uh, a, a brand new issue. There's been some previous work done by the city a number of years ago related to potential alternative uses of the property. Um, should it be available to the city to do something more than cut the weeds on it? Uh, so it was our intent to develop background information, give you some thoughts, and allow you to have a more detailed and thoughtful discussion about how you would like to proceed. Okay. Understood. I'm afraid the public hearing's closed. Thank you. Uh, any more discussion with the council or action? Would someone like to introduce the resolution? If there's no other, dis if there's no other discussion, I'll introduce the resolution. Vice Mayor Ibera. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. 